The just shall live by faith. Something tells me we're going to be hearing a lot of that this week on 3ABN Sabbath School panel. We're making our way through the study of the book of Hebrews. And this week, lesson number 11, we're going to be talking about Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That is, he is the perfecter of our faith. We can't make ourselves perfect, right? Only Jesus can. In this case, we want to remind you how you can get a copy of this study because it's never too late to study with us and to follow along. You need to go to 3absabbathschoolpanel.com. Again, 3absabbathschoolpanel.com and you can access a free copy of the study online. Or as always, we like to encourage you to find your local Seventh-day Adventist church and, you know, ask for a free copy and study with the brethren. That always helps. But don't go anywhere. We're going to come back in just a moment and we're going to make our way through this exciting study in the book of Hebrews. Welcome back to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. We are in week number 11. Wow. (laughs) It's going by quickly, but we have been enjoying this study greatly because it points to Jesus. Any study about Jesus is a good study, right? A great study, a fantastic study, as our brother Larry would say. (laughs) Fantastic. Uh, But my friends, it's a blessing to have you back each and every week joining us. You are 3ABN family, and we certainly appreciate your love, your prayers, and support for the ministry as we are continuing through our study in the book of Hebrews. Uh, We're on lesson number 11, which is entitled Jesus, Author and Perfecter of Our Faith. And we're going to be indeed talking a lot about that this week. I want to read our memory text and then I'm going to introduce our panel and we're going to pray and get right into this study. I love our our memory text because to me, I know we all have our favorite text in the book of Hebrews, Mm -hmm. but to me, to me, Hebrews 12 verse 2 is no doubt probably for me the theme text of the entire book. Mm. Hebrews 12 verse 2, which has been quoted many times, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, mm. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What a powerful mm. text, a powerful truth. To my left, we have Miss Shelley Quinn. How are you? I'm doing very well. I get to talk about Abraham today and how he looked unto Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. And of course, Brother James Rafferty, always a blessing to have you. Good to be here. I'm talking about Moses today, believing in the unseen. Oh, nice. Mm. And of course, my brother in Christ, Brother Jason Bradley, always a blessing to have you. It's a blessing to be here. I'm really excited about this lesson where I'll be talking about by faith, Rahab and rest. All right. Nice. Praise the Lord. And last, but certainly not least, (laughs) Miss Jill Morricone, always a blessing to have you as well. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. I'm excited because I get to talk about Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Oh, nice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, before we get right into our study, as always, we want to invite the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. to lead all of us, us and you, in our study. So if you would, Jill, have a prayer for us. Holy Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, grateful for the gift of Jesus and the gift of your word and the Holy Spirit and that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. We do that just now, eagerly anticipating what you are going to do in and through this hour together. Mm -hmm. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Sabbath afternoon's lesson brings out that Hebrews 11 and 12 are probably the most loved chapters of the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, they describe the Christian life as a race in which all, per- all uh, participate and in which all who stay faithful will receive the reward. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for that reward. <laughs> Looking forward to it. They also describe the drama of redemption as a race in which people of faith from the past preserved despite Mm -hmm. sufferings, but have not yet received the reward. And that's because the story ends with us as well, not just them. We are the concluding act. 
mm. with drama. The drama culminates with our entering and running the last part of the race. And with Jesus seated at the goal line, at the right hand of God. I like that, at the goal line <laughs> of the right hand of God. He provides inspiration as well as the ultimate example of how the race is run. He is the ultimate witness that the reward is true and that he is the forerunner who opens the way for us. Hebrews 11 explains that faith is confidence in God's promises, even if we cannot yet see them ourselves. This lesson will explore the faith, excuse me, this lesson will explore what faith is and how it is obtained through the examples of the past, but especially and centrally through the example of Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. And so Sunday's lesson opens up. It's entitled, The Righteous Will Live by Faith. And it's going to start us off right here in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 to 39, if we want to turn there in our Bibles. Again, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 to 39. And notice what the Bible says. It says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, mm -hmm. which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to, per to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. My friends, don't draw back, but keep pressing forward with endurance in the faith of Christ, which is what this entire lesson is all about. Endurance is a characteristic of God's end time people. Without it, we cannot be able to receive the promises. Isn't that what we're hanging on to? The mm. promises of God's word. Where would we be without them? And so we can't receive the promises that God has given us if we do not keep fighting forward with endurance. That's why Jesus often reminds the seven churches in Revelation. To, you see, hear this with each and every church. To him who overcomes, to him who overcomes, to him who overcomes. Well, that communicates a sense of fighting, a sense of enduring to the end, as Jesus says in Matthew 24. Even in Revelation chapter 13, verse 10, notice what it says. If anyone has an ear, let him yeah. hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You hear a lot of that in the book of Revelation, talking about the patience of the saints. Right there in our third angel's message, which we're hanging on to this truth and this hope that we find in Christ Jesus, where it says, here is the patience mm. of the saints. And right there in Revelation 14, verse 12, here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I just want to highlight there, there may be someone watching for the first time this program right now, and you've never heard this truth, but I want to share with you, there's a difference between faith in Jesus and the faith of Jesus. We want both, right? We want to definitely have faith in Jesus and put our faith in Christ. But Jesus is not looking for just mere uh, uh, you know, uh, cheerleaders on the sideline. He wants us to be in the game. Right? He wants us to exercise the very faith that Jesus exercised while he was here on earth in his Father. So we mm -hmm. need to be exercising the very faith of Jesus and we need to endure to the end. In order to endure, however, believers need to hold fast their faith. We see that in Hebrews 10. It also goes on to say Paul has shown that the desert generation was not able to receive the promise because they lacked faith. Mm -hmm. Hebrews portrays believers as also at the threshold of the fulfillment of the promises and need to exercise faith if they want to receive the promises. We see this in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28, a beautiful message here which says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins mm -hmm. of many to those who eagerly wait for him will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Are you eagerly waiting on him? Mm. Are you enduring to the end? Are you holding fast mm. to your confession and holding fast to the faith in Jesus Christ? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, same message, beautiful message, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're looking forward. We're seeing the day approaching. We see the signs of the times unfolding around us. We have heartaches. We have despair. We have troubles. We have trials. We have challenges. But my friends, are you holding fast to the faith? The righteous shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 to 39. Listen to what the Bible says. Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 39. 
Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. We read this earlier, but continue to watch what it says here in verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul, my friends. Or do you believe in Christ? Have you, have you staked your faith? and grounded it in the root of Jesus Christ, my friends. Stay grounded in the faith. Paul introduces his exposition of the faith with a quotation from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 through 4, or Habakkuk, I guess that's how you would say. I've heard it said both ways. Habakkuk, Habakkuk. <laughs> had Habakkuk had asked God why he tolerated the treacherous people who oppressed the righteous. Mm. We see that in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. The prophet and his people were suffering Thus, they wanted God to act. God answered, however, that there was an appointed time for the fulfillment of his promise, and they needed to wait. We read this in Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Notice what the Bible says here. It says, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and mm -hmm. it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. Hallelujah. It will not tarry. Amen. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just, there it is again, shall live by faith. My friends, Jesus is tarrying for a time, but he's not going to tarry forever. Yes. Wait for him. That's the purpose of this text. Mm. Wait for him. Ground your faith in the root of Jesus Christ. Habakkuk and his people lived like us between the time of the promise and the time of its fulfillment. God's message continued in Hebrews. He who is coming will come and will not delay. Mm. The message, of course, refers to Jesus. He, of course, is the righteous one, the embodiment of the faith who pleases God and provides mm. life. You know, I just want to take a few moments here just to kind of in conclusion, just offer up some simple truths and principles about faith because we know the just shall live by faith, but many people struggle with that. Mm. First of all, notice that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 does tell us the beautiful promise that for by grace you have been saved through faith. faith. Through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Not, of course, not of our works lest we should boast, right? You know, it's, it's not about works, but yet we are judged by our works because our works mm. tell the story of our faith. Now, also notice that in Revelation 12, we read this earlier, that here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So the faith that we are saved by, and since we're saved by grace through this faith, it's the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what was the faith of Jesus? Jesus depended solely upon the word of his Father. Amen. He depended upon the words of his Father. He depended on the will of his Father, not his own. That's really, it's really what it comes down to. Do you have enough faith? Faith, that you trust more in God's word than you trust in your own brain, your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own beliefs. That's why Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith, our faith builds in God when we give time to grow and learn from him in his word. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth, my friends. The truth shall what? It shall make you free. That's what Jesus said. It shall set you free. It shall make you free. We are set free by what Christ has done and it's our faith in the promises of God's word and what Christ has done for us that sets us up to be able to inherit the kingdom of God. But my friends, we have to endure. Mm. We have to finish. That's why Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10 says this. It says, and let us not grow weary while doing good. Mm -hmm. for, the, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Are you of the household of faith? Mm -hmm. are, have you grounded yourself in the rock of Jesus Christ? Do you base your faith in your life upon the word of God? Or do you trust more in what's in between you know, this, this head right here, this <laughs> brain of your own? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. My friends, that's why Matthew 24, 13, Jesus says, but he who endures to the mm -hmm. end shall be saved. Keep pressing forward. Keep waiting on Christ. He won't tarry for long. Ah, thank Amen. you for that Amen. foundation 
Yeah. Ryan, so I have Monday by faith, Abraham. Mm. Let's read one of my favorite verses, Hebrews 11, one through three. Hebrews 11, one through three. And the Bible says, now faith is the substance, the hypostasis, mm -hmm. the title deed is what this means in the Greek. See, faith, we can claim God's promises. We have a title deed because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 20 that all mm -hmm. of his promises are yes and amen mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. That's so right. if you're in Christ, you've got these promises. And then he says in verse two, for by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. They were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made mm. of the things which are visible. Mm. Only God can speak something into existence. Only God's word has the power to create something out of nothing. Yeah. And as you referred to Ephesians 2, 8, says that by faith we are saved by grace. Through, we are saved by grace through faith, but it says, but not of yourselves. Yes. See, faith is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says each one of us, when we come to God, we've been given mm -hmm. this measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say, salvation is God's gift, hallelujah. So now let's jump down to verse six, Hebrews 11, verse six, because this is critical. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him mm. for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, why is it that without faith? I remember reading this and going, oh, Lord, sometimes I don't always feel like my faith is what it should be. You know, why can't I please you mm -hmm. without faith? Well, you know where the next day he took me to first John chapter five, mm. 10 through 13. See, when we don't have faith in the word of God, it's like we are calling him a liar. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's oh, eye opening. Wow. Let's, let's look at first John chapter five verses 10 through 13. Then we'll understand why we can't please God without faith. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe mm -hmm. God has made him a liar. Oh, mercy. Faith is important. I mean, yeah. if you don't have faith in God, you're saying, God, I don't believe you. You're a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given up his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son mm -hmm. has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. Sometimes people write and say, how can you say that you know you're saved? That's, that's presumptuous. And I said, no, as long as I'm in Christ, as yes. long as I have Christ, I have confidence in right. my eternal salvation. That's right. Now, if I, I have to do a test, because take heed lest you think you should, you stand, you fall, Paul said. But as long as I know that I am depending on Jesus Christ for his righteousness, for him to work in me, mm -hmm. to will and to do his good pleasure, I know that I have assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. And he goes on, John in verse 13, 1 John 5, 13 says, these things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. What? Mm -hmm. That you have eternal life mm -hmm. and you, you may continue mm -hmm. to believe in the name of the Son of God. So without faith, we can't please God because we're regarding him as a liar. Now, if we go on in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, this is a great chapter. It's the saints hall of faith, <laughs> if you will. You know, it's it's the right. hall of, of fame, but it lists the people who were faithful to God, they trusted God, they believed in God. Mm -hmm. And 
I want to point out, they walked in obedience. Yeah. See, trust is the foundation for our faith. We've got to believe in God. But James says faith without actions is stillborn. It's mm -hmm. dead. Right. <laughs> so it is actions. Walking in obedience is how we really experience faith. So this chapter goes on. Abel acted in faith. He obeyed God's requirement for sacrifice. God accepted his sacrifice and credited it to him as righteous. It talks about Enoch, how he walked with God. He pleased God through mm -hmm. his obedience. When you walk with God, that means you're walking in obedience. And he was miraculously taken to heaven without dying. It talks about Noah, who had never seen rain. He'd never seen mm -hmm. the fountains of the deep open up and break up. So... Here he works for 120 years, building an ark according to God's directions. And he was a preacher of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, that preacher of righteousness ended up becoming the heir of righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, Abraham left his home in the mm -hmm. Ur of Chaldees, not even knowing where he was going. He was just following God's directions. And then Hebrews 11 goes on to talk about Sarah, who is so far beyond childbearing. She's 90 years old, but she had faith in God's promise. And then Abraham believed God's promise that his descendants would number more than the, sand, the stars of the sky or the sands of the shore. And you know what? God credited that to him as righteousness. Mm. And Abraham proved his faith in the most amazing way. Mm -hmm. He was willing to give back to God his only begotten son. Now, mm -hmm. Isaac wasn't his only son, mm -hmm. but the word only begotten son is a covenant term. We know that Isaac had an older brother, right? Mm -hmm. But only Isaac was the son of promise. And let's look at Hebrews 11, 17 through 19, because I want to point something out. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. And he who received the promises offered up his only begotten son. That's a unique covenant mm -hmm. son of promise. Mm -hmm. And it says, of whom it was said, and Isaac, your seed shall be called and then this is what it says why he did it. Concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Now, what does it mean? You know, Abraham so believed God's promise. He knew that it, God said, Isaac would be the seed through which all of these descendants came. Mm -hmm. But I have a personal belief. I'm going to share it with you. You can decide if I'm right or I'm wrong. In John chapter 8, 56, Jesus said, Your father Abraham saw my day and was glad. Mm. Abraham knew that God was going to give his unique, one-of-a-kind, son of promise, the only begotten son, the covenant son. Mm -hmm. He knew that he was going to be the sacrifice for mankind and that he would be resurrected. That's what Jesus is saying. Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he was glad. I believe in Genesis 15, when God cut covenant with Abraham, remember Abraham cut all the pieces in half and God put Abraham in, in a deep sleep and God alone walked through the pieces to confirm the covenant and Abraham was having visions and dreams. I believe that's when God showed Abraham the day of our Lord. So when he asked Abraham, bring up Isaac, I, he's sitting there, Abraham is saying, well, he's the promised son. You're going to let your son be sacrificed. You're going to resurrect him. So I reckon you can re resurrect Isaac too. See, when we think about Abraham coming to give this, some people are like, oh, how could he? He knew God would resurrect him. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we have fiery trials, right now I'm walking through a fiery trial, mm. but it's the crucible of our faith. Mm -hmm. And 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 says this, 
in your trials, greatly rejoice. So now for a little while, you've been grieved by various trials, mm -hmm. that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold and, uh, that perishes, though it is tested by the fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The just mm -hmm. shall walk <laughs> by faith. Amen. <laughs> praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Shelley, for that. Well, my friends, we're going to take a short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ever wish you could watch a 3ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. Hello, friends. Welcome back to 3ABN Sabbath School Panel, and we're going to pass it to Pastor James Rafferty for Tuesday's lesson. Okay, thank you. I have Tuesday's lesson. My name is James Rafferty, and we are studying Moses, believing in the unseen. Mm -hmm. And our quarterly is taking us to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, right where Shelley left off with that wonderful um, exposition on Abraham and the belief that he had that the father could raise his son just like he raised his own son, raised Abraham's son just like he raised mm -hmm. his own son. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20 picks up here with Isaac, the faith of Isaac, blessing Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. And then it says in verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff. Mm -hmm. By faith, verse 22, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the parting of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, verse 23, Moses, when he was born, was mm -hmm. hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. And then verse 26 says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches mm. than the treasure in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Yeah. It's beautiful when you think about it. In fact, just going all the way back here to verses 12, uh, 20 and 21, by faith, we have this blessing that Isaac mm -hmm. places upon um, Esau and Jacob. And we have Jacob, when he was dying, blessing both the sons of Joseph when he's worshiping on top of his staff. You know what that tells me? That tells me we're never too old to be a blessing to somebody else. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are ready to die. These guys leaning on the cane. I, I, I'm not looking forward to the time when I'm leaning <laughs> on a cane or walking with a walker, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. when that time comes, I think I still need to look for the opportunity to be a blessing. That's, good. That's right. what the Bible's telling me. Amen. By faith, I've got to look past my achy bones. I've got to look <laughs> past my, my dying joints. I've got to look past my dim eyesight. I've got to look past all of that stuff, you know, because they weren't sure what hand was what, you know, when he's putting those hands down. I've got to look past all of that. And what that takes is a little bit of humility because as we get older, we it's forget so things. We don't <laughs> speak as well as we used to. We don't do as well as we used to, you know, and these young guys come along like Ryan and Jason and Jill, and they just kind of, blah, 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 and we're like, whoa, 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 whoa right, Shelly? <laughs> That's right. It's humbling. But by faith, we can still be a blessing and give a blessing. And I'm, I'm speaking Amen. not so much to us as to the audience, because I know there are people out there today who are listening, who are thinking, what can mm -hmm. I do for God? Amen. What can I do for God? There's Amen. so much that you can do for God. We'd love you to join the 3ABN prayer team and be praying for us and for others. Um, there's so many times that we can be a blessing to others mm -hmm. as we look by faith to what God has for us. And then it says in verse 23 that, and I love this, he did not fear the king's 
commandment. And again, that's emphasized in verse 27, that Moses by faith forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. I think that there's a connection here. You know, in verse 23, Moses was hid three months of his parents because they didn't fear the king's commandment. Mm. And Moses inherited that lack of fear. He inherited that. He got that from his yeah, posterity, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so when, when he got older, he didn't fear the wrath of, of the king either. And we have a, a, an powerful and important job as parents, don't we? Mm -hmm. to pass on to our children the fear of God Amen. and not yeah. the fear of men. And so parents, I think, are here. I mean, all through these verses, we see the parental blessing being passed on to the posterity, the, the parents blessing their children. And part of the blessing that we are to pass on is a fear of God rather than yeah. fear of men. We are to respect men. We are to respect the king and pray yes. for the king. But our number one reverence and respect is to be to God in heaven. And then there's the, the meat, there's the key, there's the center of all of this. And that's in verses 24 and 25. By faith, Moses, mm -hmm. when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I like the way it says that mm -hmm. because it suggests to me that there was some pressure. Oh, yeah. Where there was some pressure on him. You know, it's one thing to say no, and it's <laughs> another thing to say, no, I refuse that. Yes. I'm, I'm refusing yes, this, yes. right? It's being urged. And I'm not, not, I don't even think it's being urged necessarily by the others, by those around him, but maybe even by his own nature. You know, right. it's just coming on him like, oh. Have you ever been in a situation where you have been hit so many times by the devil? You know, he just, he knows the button to push. He knows where to, to get you. <laughs> and you're like, no, I refuse <laughs> to go there. I'm not going there at this time, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah. I don't think it was easy for Moses. No. Oh, no way. You know, think about, put yourself in his situation. Mm -hmm. We have to put ourselves in his situation. Mm -hmm. We have to. Friends, we are facing Moses' situation because in Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. it talks about a time when we are going to be pressed, when we're going to be, as Matthew 24, 9 says, afflicted or pressured, when we're going to face the loss of the ability to buy and sell because of the king's commandment, yes. right? And we, in that time, we've got to look and see what what did Moses do in this situation? Moses had faith. Why did he have this faith? Why was he able to refuse the pressure of Pharaoh and Pharaoh's court and the riches? And it says here, the pleasure of sin for a season. Well, the key in the context of these verses is, verse 26, he esteemed the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. Hold on. For he had respect yes. under the recompense of the reward. Mm -hmm. It even says in, in other translations, he was looking to. He was mm -hmm. looking yeah. to. I don't know if you remember, friends, but... Brian Day said it several times. His favorite verse in the book of Hebrews is Hebrews chapter 12, <laughs> verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author yeah. and finisher of our faith. He was looking to, he was looking ahead. You know, I hasn't seen and, and ear heard or, or even entered into the imagination what God has prepared for us. That's right. But... The next verse says, mm -hmm. but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Mm -hmm. So God is giving us a glimpse. God is giving us a taste of that reward. And Moses got this taste. Yeah. He got this glimpse and he looked to it. He focused on it. He thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he might have thought of the idea that's revealed to us in Psalm 16, verse 11. Mm -hmm. and, and compared it with this because this tells us that he refused the pleasure of sin for a season. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the problem with sin. It's kind of like the weather. Yeah. It's seasonal, you know. <laughs> when I got here, it was 70 degrees. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> it didn't even get up to 30. <laughs> it's seasonal. Pleasure of sin for a season. It doesn't last long. But in Psalm uh, 16, verse 11, mm -hmm. powerful here. And, and Moses is thinking about this principle. He's thinking, hmm, do I want the pleasure of sin for a season? Or Psalm 16, verse 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. Moses was being shown the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Oh, to be in the presence of God. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forever more. Okay, Amen. what do I want? Do I want seasonal or do I want Hawaii? <laughs> wh wh which one do I want? Do I, do I want it to be right. warm some of the time and cold the rest of the time or, you know, Alaska or do I want just constant, continual, pleasurable weather. Now, of course, I'm using illustrations in the weather, but this is what Moses is understanding. Mm -hmm. He's recognizing that the, this world and its treasures are seasonal. They come and they go. 
And for Moses, they're long gone. <laughs> we could say that, you know, Moses would have been a pharaoh. He would have lived for that three score and ten, mm -hmm. and then he would have died, and he would have been entombed, probably in a mummy's tomb, and perhaps we would have discovered him like Tutankhamun, and we would have thought, wow, look at all Moses' stuff. But where is Moses today? Right. Moses yeah. is in heaven. And I believe that he was resurrected for this very specific point, and that is to help us to realize that he made a good choice. Moses yeah, made that's a, good. a good choice. Mm -hmm. And God said, you know, I'm going, to I'm going to resurrect Moses because he made a choice that was amazing. And this is going to help others to make the same choice. The rest of our lesson compares uh, Hebrews 11, 24 to 27 with Hebrews 10, 32 to 35. And basically says the same thing we've learned in Revelation chapter 13, the same thing that Job learned. All of us are going to have to come to a place where the things of this world are insignificant in mm -hmm. comparison with the things that God has for us. And God is the only one that can do that for us. Mm -hmm. Our job is to keep our eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if there's some root of bitterness, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, which is a supplement to Ryan Day's favorite verse, says, considering him diligently. Yes. Diligently. So Revelation 14, verse 4 says it this way, following the Lamb wherever He goes. Mm -hmm. Our only hope is to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. 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 That's powerful, Pastor Rafferty. I do feel like these years are flying by, so this young age is going to disappear rather, rather quickly. Hey, I'm Jason Bradley, and I have Wednesday's lesson, and it's entitled, By Faith, Rahab and the Rest. You know, it's interesting how God allows us to experience things that will be beneficial for His service in the future. One of my uncles used to always say that you don't lead where you don't go and you don't teach what you don't know. And that's something that stuck with me throughout the years. As I perused the powerful story of Rahab, God started to share some spiritual gems with me. And you may want to write down some of these verses uh, as we journey through the Word of God. We'll begin in Numbers chapter 13, uh, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Now let's jump down to verses 16 and 17. Uh, these are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, I'm horrible with these names, by the way, <laughs> Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. I find it very interesting that out of the 12 spies that were sent out, only two of them came back faithful. They were faithful. Mm -hmm. uh, the two spies that were faithful were Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. Now, when we fast forward through scripture to the book of Joshua, specifically in chapter two, we see that Joshua sent two spies, mm -hmm. uh, the same number of spies that were faithful during his spy mission. Joshua had proved himself faithful during preparation time and God placed him in a position of leadership. All throughout scripture, we see examples of God using people who have a willing heart for mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And as the lesson points out, Rahab is probably the most unexpected character mm -hmm. whom we find in Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah. Rahab is one of two women mentioned yeah. by name. She is the 10th in the list, the first being forefathers and patriarchs of Israel, and each one was regarded as being righteous. Uh, when we come to her, we find that she is not only a woman, but a Gentile prostitute. Mm. <laughs> that brings us to the next logical question. What was Rahab known for? Rahab was known for her incredible act of faith. Mm. She stood up for the Lord in the most trying of circumstances. Even though she didn't witness all that God had done, she believed what she heard about how God protected his children. Mm -hmm. In Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 through 11, Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. 
For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. Mm. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God mm -hmm. in heaven above and on earth beneath. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want us to look at verse nine again. And said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted because of you. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that faith statement? Mm. Did mm -hmm. you notice that? Mm -hmm. Rahab spoke on something that hadn't happened yet wow. with right. confidence that it would come to pass mm -hmm. because of the one true God mm -hmm. that the good. spies, whom the spies served. Now, in subsequent verses, we see Rahab interceding on her family's behalf and making a covenant with God's chosen spies. They established the conditions uh, and instructed her of the sign needed for her and her family to be saved from destruction. Look at Joshua chapter 2, verses 17 through 19. So the men said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own home. Mm -hmm. So it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the street his blood shall be on his own head mm. and we will be guiltless. <laughs> and whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him. Mm. The scarlet cord or the red cord that was hanging out of the window as a mark for, preser for the preservation of life within Rahab's home reminds me of the Passover. In Exodus chapter 12, verses 7 and 13, the Lord was speaking to Moses and Aaron and he said, And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they, ate, where they eat it. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Notice the sign of blood used during the Passover and the sign of the scarlet or red cord that was hanging from Rahab's window. Now, in both cases, occupants of those homes were sealed mm. and shielded mm. from destruction. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31 says, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. Mm. When she had received the spies with peace. Now, here are a few takeaways from this powerful story of faith. Number one, Jill, you always have <laughs> lists, so we'll, we'll start the list here. Number Yay. one, if we want to please God, we have to have faith. Mm. You heard Shelly uh, share this verse earlier, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. Mm. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take it one step further and go to James chapter two, verses 17 and 18. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Mm -hmm. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Good. Number two, your past is irrelevant when it comes to your future. What matters is the decision that you make today. Mm. Rahab was a prostitute at one point, but she ended up having a tremendous amount of faith in God. Yeah. She and her family were spared from destruction and she ended up in the faith book, <laughs> Hall of Fame. Number three, Rahab 
opened up her heart to God and opened up her home to God's servants. Yeah. Revelation chapter three, verse 20 says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus speaking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Mm. Rahab made a decision. This is point number four. Rahab made a decision not to allow her culture to trump her devotion to God. Mm. And so I leave you mm. with this question like to that. ponder. Good, Do you have enough faith to choose God over culture? Mm. Think about it. Amen. That's Thank you good, so man. much, Jason. Pastor James, Shelley, Pastor Ryan. This, I think, is one of my favorite sections of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. I love that, the hall of faith. I have Thursday's lesson, which is Ryan's favorite verse, Hebrews 12. I have verses one through three, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Yes. So we were in Hebrews 11. Just turn over a chapter and let's pick it up with Hebrews 12. And what does Hebrews 12 start with? Therefore. That's right. What does that mean? What has come before? Faith chapter. The faith chapter. The hall of faith. Because of what has come before, because of Abel and Enoch and Noah, because of Abraham, as Shelley talked about, and Sarah, because of Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses, mm -hmm. because of Rahab, mm -hmm. because of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel mm -hmm. and the prophets, because mm -hmm. of that, therefore, mm -hmm. we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, these are those heroes of faith. Let us, we see the shift here from the past, right. the heroes of faith, the saints hall of fame to us today. What are we supposed to do? Let us lay aside every weight mm -hmm. and the sin which so easily ensnares us mm -hmm. or besets us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Mm -hmm. What is the race for? We are racing for eternal life. Amen. The struggle is fierce. Mm -hmm. It's not against other runners. The struggle is against flesh, not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and the rulers of mm -hmm. wickedness in these high places. Mm -hmm. The struggle is against self. The struggle is against sin. The race, it involves pain, mm -hmm. persecution, shame, it might involve death, but what is the reward? We studied in Hebrews chapter three and four, the reward is entering God's rest. What is the reward? We studied Hebrews five through 10. Mm -hmm. The reward is having access behind the veil into God's presence. What is the reward? We see that in Hebrews 11. It is the heavenly homeland. That is eternal life, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop there. What's the next verse? Chapter verse two, looking unto Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the climax of the saints hall of faith. That's right. Jesus is the climax of the heroes hall of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, Jesus is the pinnacle. Do you look at Jesus or do you look at your problems? Mm. Mm. Do you look at Jesus or do you look at your pain? Mm. Do you look at Jesus or do you look at your shame or your spouse or your neighbors or your children or your coworkers? Do you look at Jesus or do you look at your pastor? Do you look mm. at your boss? Mm -hmm. Do you look at your friend? Do you look at Jesus right. or do you look at yourself? Looking unto Jesus. Mm. Jacob looked unto Jesus from the ground at Bethel. He saw his rock. Joseph looked unto Jesus as a captive slave. Mm. He saw his liberator. Daniel looked unto Jesus from the depths of the lion's den. Mm. He saw his protector. Mm. Samson looked unto Jesus from an arena of the Philistines. He saw his helper. The shepherds, they looked unto Jesus from the fields. They saw their savior. Mm. Simeon looked unto Jesus from the temple and saw his Messiah. Zacchaeus looked unto Jesus from the treetops. He saw his restorer. Nicodemus looked unto Jesus from the dark of night and saw his recreator. Mm -hmm. Blind Bartimaeus looked unto Jesus from the road and he saw his light. The demoniacs, they looked unto Jesus from their imprisoned minds. Mm -hmm. They saw their deliverer. Peter looked unto Jesus from the angry waves. He saw his rescuer. 
the woman looked unto Jesus from where she had been cast in the dirt mm. and she saw the pure one. Peter looked unto Jesus from the judgment hall and saw his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Saul looked unto Jesus on the way to Damascus and saw the crucified one. Mm -hmm. And the thief looked unto Jesus hanging on the cross and he saw his redeemer. Who do you see? When you look unto Jesus, mm -hmm. looking unto Jesus, why do we look unto Jesus? Number one, we look unto Jesus because it brings us salvation. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22, look to me mm -hmm. and be saved, yes. all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. We look unto Jesus for salvation and because He is the only true God. Amen. Why do we look unto Jesus? Number two, we look unto Jesus because it changes us. Mm. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, mm -hmm. the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. We look unto Jesus because looking at Jesus it has a way of changing you. That's right. Number three, why do we look unto Jesus? Because when we look unto Jesus, we receive mercy. Mm -hmm. Psalm 123, verses one and two. Unto you, that's unto God, I lift my eyes. O you who dwell in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes... Look to the Lord our God until He has mercy on us. Mm -hmm. Looking unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do you want salvation? Look at Jesus. Do you want to be changed into the image of Jesus? Look at Jesus. Do you need mercy in your life? Look unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the verse doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher yes of our faith. In Greek, the word author does not strictly mean author. It means a person who's the originator or a leader of a movement, but who continues as the leader. Mm -hmm. I love that. He didn't just start the race and go off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He continues as our leader. Why is right. Jesus the author of our, of our race, of our faith? Why is he the founder? Why is he the pioneer of our faith? Because number one, he is the only author of the race. That's right. Nobody else opened the way for us to be saved. All the sacrificial system, we've been studying all quarter, the Levitical sacrificial system was set in place looking unto Jesus. If Jesus had not come, there would be no way for us to be saved. He opened the way for us to be saved, for us to enter the race of salvation through his sacrifice. Mm. If he had not come, we'd be running in vain. There'd be no purpose right. even in the race. John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Reason number two why Jesus is the author of our, of our faith. Not only is he the author of the race, reason number two, he's the only one who actually ran the race perfectly. Mm. He's the only one. His life was perfect as we've already established through this quarter and his death was the perfect sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 14, by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Hebrews 9, 14, we've read this too. How much more shall the blood of Christ, instead of the blood of bulls and goats, mm -hmm. how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living mm -hmm. God. And reason number three, he's the author of our faith. He is the reason we have faith. You see, our faith is actually a response to his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Our faith is a response to him. Second Timothy 2.13 says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Mm -hmm. Because he's faithful, he draws you and I in repentance. He forgives us and cleanses us. He redeems us and restores us. He transforms us and remakes us and encourages us to keep running mm -hmm. the race. But he's not just the author or the beginner of the race. He is the finisher. He is the perfecter. He right. is the completer of the race. Because he finished the race, you and I have hope that we can finish the race too. The heroes, the Saints Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11, how does it end? They all died not having received the promise, mm. but receiving it by faith mm. are far off. 
But Jesus finished the race. He's seated even right now at the right hand of the Father. And because He finished, you and I have courage. We can have joy to continue the race that is set before us. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did He do it? Looking on, we do it looking unto Jesus, who for the joy that was set before Him, That's right. endured the cross, despising the shame. Because of you and I, He looked down through the stream of time and saw the people mm -hmm. who would be saved mm -hmm. as a result of His sacrifice. You and I, looking at Jesus, can endure. You and I, looking at Jesus, can continue to run the race and know that we can be saved in His kingdom at last. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you today and every day, look unto Jesus, for when you do that, you will be saved. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God. Well, let's get some final thoughts. I'm just thinking uh, again, once again, Hebrews 11 and 19 says that when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, Abraham had so much faith in God, he knew that Jesus Christ was going to die and be resurrected. So it just says he concluded that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. That's mm. faith. Amen. 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 Yeah, just a thought here that I missed in the quarterly. It says the greatness of Moses was that he was able to see beyond the mm -hmm. promises of the king of Egypt mm -hmm. and look toward the unseen, namely the promises of God yes. and may yeah. his experience be our experience. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen, amen. You know, I just want to point out the fact that, you know, with our faith, sometimes we, we pray and we ask God for something, but he's waiting on us to take action yeah. and put our feet in the water. And so we need to press forward in faith, have that faith in God. Rahab had so much faith Things hadn't even happened yet, but she knew that it was going to come to yeah. fruition because of how faithful God is. Amen. Amen. I did not read verse 3 because of lack of time, so let's read it. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. This journey, this life that we live in is sometimes difficult, but do not become discouraged. Mm. Do not be disheartened. Do not give up mm -hmm. because Jesus is walking right beside you. Amen. All of these lessons were so great. Mm. And I, you know me, I'm a musical person. So I, James, as you're going through talking about Moses seeing the unseen, the song that came to my mind was that song, Never Part Again. Mm -hmm. The last verse says, could we but stand where Moses stood and view the landscape o'er. Not all this world's pretended good could ever charm us more. And then I love the verse. We're traveling through to Emmanuel's land. We soon shall hear the trumpet sound and Soon we shall with Jesus reign and never, never part again. Amen. Oh, I cannot Amen. wait for that. Looking Amen. unto Jesus, Amen. the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, yeah. despising the shame, but is now seated at the right hand of God, my friends. Mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's all about Christ. It's all about what he has done for us. If we would just humble ourselves mm -hmm. and yeah. receive that free, Amen. beautiful, wonderful, life-changing salvation today. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, let's, so let me just close right here. I'm just looking at the time. I didn't just now saw the clock. Uh, you want to be with us next week because we're talking next week uh, in lesson number 12, receiving an unshakable kingdom. So don't miss it. Get your friends together. Get your Bible, your notepads, all of that stuff, and meet us back here at 3ABN Sabbath School panel next week. God bless. Mm -hmm.